anybody can read no okay it says n r k n o logos kai ho kai he logos n proston theon kai theos n ho logos can you guess take a shot <laughs> you all know the word logos logos word okay logos so n r k n r k in the beginning yen ho logos in the beginning was the word and ho, ho logos yen prostotion the word was with god process with god and theos theos is god right many of us know theos is god right and god in the word but you translate this is an um definite article the the okay god god was the word or the word was god okay so i hope see now you already know greek john 1 1 so we can put the text sorry no 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 i send one on here sorry i send on whatsapp because we we don't have enough sheets what i want to do first is i just wanted to run through the curriculum what are we going to learn i want you to have a um um bigger view and um because we want to want it to be time bound and content bound so that um um you know we are we're not just going endlessly right so we have to cross some milestones um for that okay so uh, even as the sheet is coming up um I, i i just put that the title as i love koine greek i bet you all are here because of that right koine greek is basically an uh, um probably i have my numbers here okay so it was a greek that was used in 300 bc to ad 330 Greek itself has gone on a long journey uh, that's one okay um those here the language greek has gone on a long journey we all know that like any language tamil has gone through a long journey right there was somewhere in kerala where i saw i came enakal caves ferrum red right where you have very ancient tamil inscriptions okay so every language goes on a journey So if you ask what is a Koine Greek the word Koine means common Greek common Greek it was not uh, you know this and that it is just common Greek it was used between 300 BC and AD 330 and you know most of the new testament was written in that period so they all used Koine Greek and many of this in 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 Koine Greek has a lot of overlaps or similarities even in modern Greek right today is Greek but i bet there's a lot of ch- difference in pronunciation i don't know modern greek but our goal is to understand greek so that we could read our new testament okay so the course description march to august is our goal let's be time bound that is 6 months am i right 6 months an introduction to the greek of the new testament i, I would say an introduction to introduction i would say okay so th- what can you expect up as you finish this course you would uh, have the ability to read some basic level do some basic translation use word tools greek word tools lay foundation for furthering your study in koine greek okay and um, okay so this i don't think you will achieve in this class um basically elementary greek means you have to by heart all the vocabulary that is there which appears more than 50 times in the new more than 50 times in the new testament you got what i'm saying so you're going to have some vocabulary uh, to study but um, that is what it is okay so don't worry about it i will post it in the group um uh, before you go um forgot any okay pavitra okay it's not clicking my head okay pavitra is going to create a group so that we could put all the material so just make sure today being a introduction probably if you are not serious you don't want to come back it's okay <laughs> no offenses okay but whoever is here i would encourage you to commit yourself to these classes 
March we are doing one class today, April one class, May one class because I know it's all exam season, camp season. June would be two classes, July would be two classes, August would be one class. So totally we are doing how many classes? I didn't count that. Probably nine classes. Okay, eight. Okay, eight. And then there is something missing down here, right? There is one more. Yeah, review. Yeah, August 11th would be review and the term exam. Okay, on whatever you are studying. Okay, this. Okay, that's fine. So this is basically one third of your elementary grade. Yeah, am, am I clear? If you are not, if you are not understanding what I am saying, please raise your hands, ask me questions so that we are very clear. Okay, so this is one third. That means we have to repeat this three times so that you complete an elementary Greek course. So I am just taking the one third of the whole Greek portion. Okay, so almost eight threes are twenty-four. So as days goes by, uh, you will. I would be more expectation, but this is uh, to test your stamina. Okay, whether you are willing to run this race. Okay, studying Greek is like running marathon. It's long distance. Speed doesn't matter. Consistency matters, and stamina matters. Right? It will get difficult, gets complicated, but we have to just do your basics. We are doing very very slow. If you do more slow than this, you will forget everything you are reading. Okay. Got it. Any questions? Any questions? No? Are we would prefer to start the common basic with as the It's coming there. So any doubts it I asked. Now this is the grammar book I would expect you to buy at some point. It's there in the I put it in the sheet. Okay? Yeah, Rob Plummer and uh, Benjamin Merkel, they both are Greek scholars. These are great guys. Um, before we used another grammar book, but this is the grammar book you need to buy. At some point. For this, you don't need. Till you finish this, I will make sure I will give you all the material. Xerox, I will do, you know. Uh, but if after this first course, if you want to continue, you can get it in Amazon. Nowadays, you can get anything on Amazon. Good, praise God for that. So, uh, you might want to walk this, not buy this book. Slightly expensive, worth buying. Okay? It's a, it's a fantastic book. Okay, and uh, what is your goal is to read the New Testament Bible. This is what a New Testament Bible looks like. This is, um, um, yeah, I will not talk more than that. Okay, so this is how a New Testament looks like. A Greek New Testament looks like. And basically you see the text here. And below here you see vocabulary. Basically these vocabularies are words which are appearing less than 50 times. You getting what I am saying? Anything that appears more than 50 times you are memorizing. You will not find here. Right? So if it is more than 50 times you can always get help for words from below. And help you in understanding the text. So your goal is one day you could read a New Testament um, uh, Bible. So I leave it here. If you guys want to have a look at it, you can look at it. For example, it says Kata ma- Mathion. Kata Mathion. According to Matthew. Kata means according to. Right? Kata Markon. Okay, so this is something just for you guys to take a look. Kata Angadeyadu. <laughs> Kata. Okay, but as you read Greek, you know that a lot of um, words uh, English has borrowed, um, which you will, especially medical terms. Okay, so let's jump in. Um, our first goal today is, I just wanted to see a sampling of um, what this looks like. Okay, so uh, can we go to the slides? Thank you. This is the children here, please. American biscuit well or Tinker Bullets was gonna get taken to me. Start out and they did I left it though ding in. Okay, so I'm gonna write the alphabets here, okay? This is Alpha Beta Gamma Delta Epsilon Zeta Eta T 
தேட்டா அயோட்டா கப்பா லாம்டா மியூ வாட் நியூ சம்டைம்ஸ் யூ ஃபர்கெட் ஆல்ஃபபெட்ஸ் ஆல்சோ தே ஆம் ரைட் Some of this you have, you have seen in mathematics, right? I um, Then you have what? New. No. Z. Omicron. Pi. Rho. Uh, sigma. You all know Sigma? Sigma has two, two versions. Right? Log R's. doesn't come the sigma when sigma comes in the end of the word it becomes like this okay nu z omicron pi rho sigma tau upsilon then what we got p q c then we have omega no this is what in the period yeah may help me out Okay this is small omega you all know the bible says alpha and omega yeah this is alpha and capital omega so this is small alpha this is alpha and this is omega i think many of you know alpha omega okay so these are the 24 greek alphabet small letters okay alpha Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Z, Omicron, Pi, Rho, Sigma, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Chi, C. This is like a PS sound, and Omega. Okay, this is one word. It is. and see okay okay can we all say it together again okay we'll start from here alpha, alpha beta, beta gamma, gamma delta, delta epsilon, epsilon zeta, zeta eta, eta, eta theta, theta iota, iota kappa, kappa lambda, lambda mu mu nu mu. z Omicron, Omicron, Pi, Pi Rho, Rho, Sigma, Sigma Tau, Tau, Upsilon, Upsilon Phi, Phi, Chi, Chi, C, C Omega. Omega. This is like PS sound. C. It's not pre-ed letter. Okay. Now, I'll just, we can just see the slides here. Uh, go ahead, the first slide. Alpha is like a father, Fa. Alpha. Abraham. Okay, Alpha. Beta. Beta is like a B. I will put you this. I will send the PDF of this in the group so that you can take a look at it. Now, this is small case. This is upper case. Okay, so this is Alpha. Alpha. beta it looks like a and b then we have gamma then we have delta delta is a triangle right aage bade okay then we have epsilon zeta okay then we have eta eta is some of them gets confusing the so like h theta is theta iota kappa right lambda lambda is like a is like a lambda mu mu is like a m so we see some overlaps nu okay nu c the this key is like this Okay omicron omicron is a big o pi is a regular pi rho is like p sigma you all know the sigma sign yes. 
sigma, then we have tau, then we have upsilon, phi, chi. You see, omega alone, capital will be like this. Okay. So you see the small letters and alphabets. Now, if you really look at uh, an ancient script, I'll show you a sample in the, in the PowerPoint. The whole New Testament is written in capital letters. Okay? I think there will be one slide, if you can, just that we are talking. No, no, we can just go back to the slides. Sorry about that. Come down. There will be one. Come down. Nichi, nichi, nichi. This one. Okay, can you see this here? Now, by the way, I didn't create all these slides. Wish I had the capacity to do that. Uh, these are helps provided from the grammar book. So, that's helpful. Uh, this is a page from Chester Betty Pipe Papriya. Pipress, Papriya, Papriya, Papri. Okay, Papri. Okay, uh, page 46. Um, Okay, so this is how you can't see anything than that. Okay, can we get the next, next uh, thing? Next slide. Okay, see, if you are reading an ancient text, this is what will be there. The Greek scholars has to sit together and work on that and make it into this. This is what you will find in my Greek New Testament. Okay, so generally you will find the capital words in the beginning of a sentence. Or if it is a proper noun, like a name, Abraham, then A will be the Moses, you will find in capital letters. Or whenever there is a new para starting, so otherwise, generally you will find small letters. So, you might not even remember the big letters, because most of the time you will be dealing with small letters. Okay, so, and again if you see the, those texts, there will be no what? Not only they are not in... There is no punctuation. Again, punctuation is something the scholars have to work on. They understand the language. Right? So, they work on... We will talk about punctuation a little later. Um, so, what are we here? Okay, New Testament books, proper names, direct quotations, words that begin with a new paragraph. You will find the capital words. Otherwise, you are generally dealing with small words. Okay. So, anybody would like to read Adventurous? Would like to read all the alphabets right now? Anybody can just stand up or say raise your hand and say I want to read. Just go for it. Anybody want to try? Okay. So, so I want you to, you, you can Google it, you can find some rhymes. Okay. Let me try my singing part. Okay, I'll give you two minutes to buy hard. Okay, so uh, Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, Yoda, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Z, Omicron, Pyro, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon, Phi, Chi, Chi, Omega. You can, like, you all learn alphabets, right? Best way to learn alphabets is rhymes. You have to sing it. Okay, so there are a lot of songs up there in the Google, I mean, in the, in the YouTube. See what fits you. <clears throat> okay. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, eta, theta, iota, kappa, lambda, mu, nu, z, omicron, pi, rho, sigma, tau, upsilon, phi, ki, chi, omega. There are even rock songs. Some of the Bible students have put some rock songs on. Alpha, beta. <laughs> it, is, it is fun. Okay, whatever works with you. Right, the goal is what, what sticks with your head. Okay, rhymes helps you to get the alphabet stick in your head. That's what helps you. So, you have to by heart all the small letters and capital letters. Okay, Pavitra, you want to take a shot? I hear all word it is. I need to use it. I thought they died of the and died. See on? Zeta? 
टेटा टेटा आयोटा प्लीज डेल्टा Iota, Kappa, Lambda, Mu, Nu, Chi, Omicron, Pi, Rho, Sigma, Tau, Upsilon. One second, one second. When Sigma, you see two Sigmas here, right? When the sigma is coming between the word, you use this sigma. When the sigma is the last alphabet of a word, it takes this form. Atta ida. Okay. When the sigma is in the middle, that's a, a sigma. When it comes end of the alphabet, like like that we saw, right? Logos. Right somewhere here with an accent mark. Okay. The sigma is coming in the end. so it is using this form okay upsilon okay next p like phone p right p this is not theta it is like a circle and you are cutting in the middle p c like ek ch that i think indians do a better job pronouncing than the westerners okay because we are so much a tongue tongue twisting languages in india this is like ps ps Sound PSI. Oops, oops. oops. You know, we would say rarely use word oops. oops. See, okay, somebody has this in his hand, right? Who's that guy? Waterman, huh? I know some, some. Um, I remember some character. Aquaman, I think. Oh, okay. I, I don't know this guy's name. Okay, last is Omega. Oh my God, Omega. Okay. Okay, we'll start from here. Okay, I'm not going to say it. Be near the other one. They make that up until they're suddenly gone. Zeta. Eta. Theta. I got to wake up on that. Oh, that would have ever heard of 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 that. And I'm a wing. Oh, I'm a boy. I need help. Oh, did they find the all out for? We know that. It's all up there. P, P, C, C, Omega. Okay, you guys have already learned the Greek alphabets. Okay, one more time. Let's go quickly. I'm in a bottle. I'm sitting in a bottle. मैथमेटिक्स गुड जॉब विद एल्फर्ट्स 
we had a quickly learn today because the big job is alphabets but i just wanted to look at few things we're going to quickly look at the bubbles every language has bubbles right what are the english bubbles okay um yeah you can put it bro okay so these are the greek al- greek bubbles right epsilon this is epsilon right this is okay omicron it does to me wrong they got it they got it this is not no what is eta e sound this is e short this is e long e g right in tamil we have all the red a a right here you when this short e e right it gets longer o o right this is omicron this is omega right so basically we have what six seven um bubbles okay this can take both short and long let's not get too worried about it but this alphabets can take short and long um but let's not worry about it but if if you when this gets lengthened this becomes like this right epsilon becomes eta omicron becomes omega and alpha can take and lengthen that side and this is iota and epsilon just remember we have this this seven are bubbles right you can't make words be word bubbles they are sticky people okay so um okay we'll move on bubbles ke baad okay you will find iota subscript sometimes under the it goes under the word right like this is cardia you know what cardia means heart see the you know you know from where cardiac came or cardiac arrest right and um, this is this is overlapping here how come okay basically this is saying a ga pe a ga pe right so in some forms we'll talk about later this is called iota gets under the alphabet before we call it as an iota subscript nothing much to worry this is logo logos logo this is an uh, okay we'll don't worry about it so that is called an iota subscript so this is something i wanted to be aware of which will which will become more important as we get more deeper into learning the language okay next one jumble jumble yeah i think some Okay now i just want you to understand this idea of diphthongs Okay diphthong is basically when two bubbles come together they are pronounced as one sound That's all nothing very complicated okay it's called diphthongs this is some greek alphabet functional basics two vowels that are pronounced as one sound okay we'll we'll see some of the diphthongs Okay, buddy. Thank you. Okay, so you see the diphthongs here. You, you don't pronounce as a i. We call as i, i, ow, a, e i na a, u, oi, u, we. So you, when you see these two bubbles, when you see these bubbles together. we are not going to pronounce them separately they make one sound that is called a diphthong right so diphthong is one of the uh, yeah pronunciation thing so you will have this so just remember this becomes as you get into the language i want you to know when you find these words together you have to um, pronounce them together not separately got it any doubts okay we'll move on we are almost getting there yes the sigma 
Pokemon is set without between two Felettas or Penny. She doesn't start with the third form. Think they what? It can? Yeah. No, no, only if it ends. There can be a starting word with the sigma. No problem. Starting or Starting, good question. Starting in between sigma stands the same. Only if it is in the end, if it is the last alphabet, you have this sigma format. With uh, the first now said that the Kuwa is cut together in front of this. Modly, in the twin, who had put the death, being running since. No, good question. We'll get there. Basically, you try to pronounce almost three alphabets together. Okay. Um, for example, how do you pronounce this? We break it to Ma, Ark, Mark. Right, so every language we break the words into pronounceable modules. So, when you see a diphthong, you know that they're going to stick together as one word. That's the point. So here you will have the distinction of those words. Ma, a. Right, there it will have only one sound. Yeah, I want you to be aware of it, but how accurately we will spell Koine Greek will always be a, uh, quite a thing. We'll come to that later. Okay, so when you when you start seeing Greek alphabets, you will also find breathing marks. Okay, let's say not a attempted to write a. Okay, this is called a smooth breathing mark. This is called a. Rough breathing mark. Okay, this is like a what do you call? Kama. This is like a reverse kama. Okay. Okay, so when this kind of breathing mark is around, it doesn't make any difference on the pronunciation. It remains as A. A. But if you have a rough breathing mark, it takes a H sound. Ha. You get me? You will find these breathing marks only in the beginning of the word. When you see a smooth breathing mark, no change in the pronunciation. It remains the same. But if it is a rough breathing mark, it is almost putting like, this is A, this is Ha. Okay? So it takes that Ha sound. A sound, Ha sound. Okay? Only Rho um, is exception Don't worry about it Just remember This breathing marks Right And mostly the breathing marks Will be Sitting on bubbles only It doesn't sit on everywhere It sits on bubbles Okay Because you are going to see These marks So now we talked about You saw Lowercase alphabets Capital alphabets Diphthongs Now we are talking about The symbols that are Hanging around the alphabet You getting me? Right? If there is only one thing will hang below the alphabet, that is called an iota subscript. In some words you will have only that. Above, you will have breathing marks or we are going to talk about accent marks. Okay? So, breathing marks, if it is this side, like a comma, it has no effect on the pronunciation. If it is reverse, it has an ha sound. Okay? Can we just move on, bro? Greece. Okay, there are some examples here. Hamarti. Otherwise, it will be Amarti. If there is no, it is all having rough breathing mark. Right? So, it is called Hamarti. Okay? This is um, Epta. Hepta. Not Epta. Hepta. Hemira. Hemira. Hemira means day. Otherwise, it will be Emira. If there is no rough breathing mark but it is a smooth breathing mark it will be called Emira because it is rough we call as Hemira this is Hodos Hodos otherwise it will be Odos because it is a rough breathing mark it becomes Hodos Hudor Hudor means water 
Hosanna, we all know that. It's not Osanna, it is Hosanna. It takes a H sound. Right? Hemira. Hema. Hema. Hema is another word for word. We always know there's a word called Logos. Right? We have multiple words. Right? Rema. Okay, so only this, you see, uh, Rho is the only uh, non bubble that takes a rough breathing mark. Rema. Okay. You all understood breathing marks? You are finishing for the class. Okay, next. Now, last, we'll talk about accent marks, right? I, I don't think we're going to do anything more than that. That will be too much. Okay, accent marks and punctuation marks. So now, accent marks, you have acute, grave, circumflex. Acute is like this. Grave is like this, like sliding. You're, you're putting somebody in the grave, right? Another good way to learn language is connecting it with pictures. Connect with pictures. That's why all the children learn with pictures, right? So, this is acute, kind of looks cute, okay. This is grave and this is, you don't need to worry about all this babes, you can just put a uh, arc on top, right, circumflex. What is the idea of accent marks? When you see an accent mark, those alphabets need to be stressed. Thoda dum dalna, bas. You stress it a little bit, right? That is called accent marks. Acute Grave circumflex. Okay, now somebody was asking this. Don't worry about this. This is basically, uh, they have words to call the different syllables, right? Is, am I saying syllable right? What is a pronunciation object called? Syllable, right? Okay, so Ultima is the last syllable. I don't know how you pronounce it. Pu punult or antipunult. And if, uh, so this is when you have a word. When you have a word. Okay. So um, you split into different syllables. So accent marks comes only in the, the last three syllables. It's just for you to know. Okay. We will go forward. We don't need to worry about this. I just want you to be aware of this. Um... Okay, last three syllables, circumflex comes in the last two syllables, grave comes in the last syllable only. That means the last, last syllable means the last part of the word, circumflex can come in the f f last two parts of the word, acute can come in the first three parts of the word. If there is only three parts, it can come in the first also. So it, we are talking about from behind, accent marks. Where do they come? For example, this is anthropos, Anthropon. You know what is anthropos? Anthropology. Humans. Anthropos means man. That's where you get anthropology. Right? Anthropos. Anthro, anthropon is plural basically. Right? So um, you have it. The three. Anthropos. Okay? So we are breaking into three. And you see the acute coming in the um, last three syllables. So it, it can be anywhere in the three. But again, don't worry about it. Just for you to know that there are three accent marks. They are called acute, grave, and circumflex. Acute is like this. Grave is down. Circumflex is like an arc on top of the alphabet. Got it? Okay, we'll move on. It's not... Um, okay, last of today's class is punctuation marks in the Greek. As I said... When you generally when you read there is when you if you go to the old manuscripts there is no punctuation marks. So this itself is a big mammoth task that the scholars do. That's the reason even this New Testament version will get revised in some time frame. Okay, so I think this is called UBS. There are almost two to three Greek translations who work with different text. Okay, we'll move on. So basically I we saw this already. Thank you. Next word. I give it. Last word. 
Okay, so these are the four punctuation marks you see in your New Testament Bible, right? So if you see uh, a dot, it's always what? Period, end of the sentence. Okay, and uh, if you see a, a comma, a English comma is equal to the Greek comma. A English full stop is equal to a Greek full stop. But English semicolon is like an X and lifted up period. Right? Instead of period being down. So, you know what is the use of semicolon? Yeah, it is, it is a way to break the sentence somewhere between a comma and a full stop. Right? You have to break a sentence, use a comma or a colon. So, a colon in the Greek Bible will be like an, an exalted period. And you will not find any question mark, but you will find a semicolon, and that semicolon is a question mark. Got it? When you see a semicolon in the Greek Bible, it is basically a question mark. If you see a lifted up period, it is a semicolon, otherwise, period and comma is all the same. Okay. Okay, any doubts? Any doubts at this till this point? You still want to be in the Greek class? <laughs> no, no, Latin Latin is a very new language. It is written in Hebrew, Aramic and Greek. The whole of New Testament is Koine Greek. The Old Testament is in Hebrew and then some parts of, I think Ezekiel and Daniel are in Aramic. And it is a good chance that in Jesus' time they spoke Aramic. Right? But mostly the written language was Greek. Because that was Pax Romana, everybody was reading Greek. It's like English right now in India. We all speak Kara and all that, when you go to write, you start writing in English. Because everybody has to read. Something like that. Okay. Any question till this point? Okay. So I'm going to pass this. This is your homework for the month. Okay. Uh, this is the homework for the month. This will be posted in the group also. I'll just take one. Okay. And you have to memorize this vocabulary. I'll, I'll, I'll just go through the vocabulary right now. Okay, what are the exercises? Uh, if you can just pass it around. Let me say I can send you that word file. Uh, what? Calvin, the hand. You're in past. You're the bully. You're full of your fat. You don't need it. Or they can stand up. I want to try and keep the class within one hour. But, um, yeah. More than one hour, nobody has a capacity. Okay, one of my prayers is to build a Greek community in this country. That's a long term goal. So, this is part of welcoming you into that community. Okay, because this language is. People get so excited about English translations. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, praise God for English translations. But I think God willing, our goal is to create a community. Because this is a long journey. You're starting today, you will do a great job understanding Greek at least three years from now. So as I said, it is a marathon. If you're looking for shortcuts, I can see after a few classes you won't show up. Because this is going to get more and more... Dry, right? Language study is dry. But we have to find a way to keep it exciting. Okay, so um, I send you that. Uh, thank you. So before we see, look at the workshop. This is the, this is the um, work uh, vocabulary I want you to study. We'll, we'll just look at the vocabulary first and then we'll come to that. You didn't ask that for Andy. Thank you. Okay. Agape. Now, what you see here, I'll tell you the last. This is definite article. 
Okay, in English, there is only one definite article. What is that? The A uh, is an indefinite article. Is it so? I'm confused. Okay, the. Okay, in, in Greek, this means it is a feminine article. In Greek, it differentiates masculine and feminine and neuter. I know that you understand. Masculine, feminine, neuter. Masculine, feminine, the table is a neuter. Doesn't have life. Right? But by the way, doesn't really mean that. Because Holy Spirit comes in neuter. Okay, we'll get to that later. That's why it gets a little complicated. When with some theological debates. But as you guys learn, you'll understand. So, be aware of this. We'll come to that. When you see this, what alphabet is this? Eda, right? So, it becomes he, not a. This is such a he sound. Okay, so, I'm going to read for you. Agape. Can please follow after me? Agape. Agape. Agape means love. G. G. How are you? G. G is earth. Geology comes from there. As I said, a lot of Greek and English. Geology. G. Zoe. Zoe means life. Right? Zoe is life. That's why you have zoo, zoology. Zoe is life. Phony. Phony means voice. Phony. Right? Agate phony means good voice. If I see the song leaders and say, Yo, Agate phony means you have good voice. Okay, so phony is voice. That's why you have phonetics, whatever that is. Okay. Alithya. Alithya means truth. Alithya. Okay, can you say with me? Agape. Gay, Gay. Zoe. Zoe, Phony, Phony. Alithya, Alithya, Alithya is truth. Okay, next. Take it, take all. We're all on, we're wet, we're all on the sea, we're You said that, I don't know how to give that to the masculine son of. Neuter, neuter, neuter. Neuter. Neuter means neutral. Neuter. Okay. Hamartia. Now, before you saw, before you saw what word? Can you go behind? Well, well, not in. Alithya. What breathing mark is this? Smooth or rough? Smooth. So, we didn't make any change in pronunciation, right? We call Alithya, right? If you move next one, the, what breathing mark is that? Rough. So we call hamartia. That's why you call the hematology. Okay. Basilia. Basilia means kingdom. You find this. Let your kingdom come. Basilia. Okay. Doxa. Doxa means glory. Glory of God. Doxa. Ecclesia is congregation. That's where we call ecclesiastical. Our ecclesia is the church, right? Ecclesia is congregation, church. So, anything to do with church. Eccle- ecclesiology is the study of congregations. Hamira is day, right? Uh, for a day. So, all these are feminine words. Right? Greek differentiates masculine, masculine, feminine, and neuter. What is that? We all know that. What is that? By the way, we all know that. Cardia. This is day. Day means what he called is a conjunction. You know conjunction? Conjunction is a word that connects two sentences, right? It's a connecting word. And, but now, again, day can be translated based on the context. That's why Greek translation is little complicated because it is not one word for one word. No language can have words like that. We can get the closest to words. So when you see day, it depends on the context. 
This is kai. See, both words can be used for and. But day leans more towards but, kai leans more towards and. Men, men, indeed, on the other hand, and as I said, these are the three definite articles. Masculine, feminine, neuter. Okay? So you have to buy hard this. Oh, buy. Buy hard them. Right? I might, I might give you jungled up. Right? So I might give you the Greek word and say write the English meaning. Or I will give you the English meaning I ask you to write the Greek word. But just buy hard it. Just buy hard it. Okay, I'll just see the text. Thank you. So this is the homework for you. Okay. But how do you pronounce word? Do you have any video? You could have to check your Google app. You can do Google. There's a lot of good rhymes there. So I would say you have to write. I'm not so worried about that. We will have a test. When you come next time, the first Sunday of April, you will have a test on Greek alphabets. All the small letters, all the capital letters. By heart. Okay? So basically, write it. 100 times, 20 times, whatever you want to do, do. Okay, get the alphabets under your belt. Especially the smaller case. Right? Secondly, circle the words in Ephesians chapter 1, 3 to 6. I put it in the Greek there. That have a diphthalong. So, hunt for diphthalong. Wherever you find diphthalongs, you go around and put a circle. Right? Put a circle and say this is a tip the law. Okay, you have to put a circle like this on the sentence. Okay, so I will give you a question paper like this. And um, no, I think you can do it at home. I'm not going to mess you up with that. Okay, so you can just do it at home for practice. And I want you to bring this next week. Not next week, next month. Somebody can take this. Who wants this? Okay, I'll give it to the... The younger girls. Okay. Thirdly, this is all exercise for you to interact with it. Um, I think Pavitra is making a group. And I will post all the material. In case you didn't have the sheet, please take a printout and do the homework. Okay. This is not for an exam tomorrow, but just for you to practice. Circling the depth of You get to understand. This is basically... Identify the accent marks and the breathing marks, if any, in the following... Okay, so if there is an accent mark here, put that. So what accent mark is there? Ilogitos. Ilogitos. What accent mark is that? Acute. Right? So you write acute and the breathe, you know, accent mark is here. Sorry. Yeah. Grave is the accent mark that is on Omicron, I think. I think the, I can't even see. Okay, it is a smooth breathing mark on Upsilon. Okay, so you write an accent mark, you write grave. And breathing mark, you write smooth breathing mark. Okay, this is Esu. Esu was Jesus. Right, so you can say circumflex. And on the I, you have this smooth breathing mark. You can write smooth breathing mark. So you just get, start identifying the accent marks and breathing marks. Deal? Okay, come down, come down. Okay, try and read in your fun time. You will be sounding like a mad guy, it's okay. Simply read, okay? Try to put the alphabet, now that you know the alphabets, try reading. Kai, Kathos, Moises, Ophiosenton, Ophin, Ente, Hemi, Erimo. Right? So, you will not understand anything, but I'm just, I want you to have fun reading alphabets in a sentence. Okay? This is basically John chapter 3, verse 14 to 21, just for fun reading. But this is not fun, this you have to be by hearted. Okay? So, the test will be on only two things. One is alphabets. Another one is vocabulary. Bus. All other is exercise. When you come on first week of April, you have to write the small alphabets, capital alphabets by heart. 
and there will be uh, whatever you are supposed to scan this so that they could capture the number right yeah that's what i understood they all know okay 